Day 4. Time, approximately 3.15 p.m. Location, The Glow, Salt Cube City. That's impossible. Ghouls are super stupid zombies that eat ponies. You're ugly, but mighty fine ponies. You can't be ghouls. If you're not telling me where the ghouls are, I'm gonna go back to looking for them on my own. Bleh! Bobby smiles, stuck out her tongue. Soft Air and Peach Blossom exchanged a rapid glance. Then Peach spoke. We have no reason to lie to you, puppy. We are ghouls. Every... Not every ghoul is a mindless pony eater. But they told me... But you only listen to what you want to hear. Gee, you're a pain in the flank. Did any pony ever tell you that? Peach sighed in relief. At least she'd let that go. It wasn't nice, but the foal seemed something more than simply spoiled. She was completely selective about any information she received. Wake up, ghost. This isn't some magical land. This is Equestria. The worst sinkhole ever. Puppy stepped back, afraid of the decomposing pony that was scolding her, or maybe scared by the truth in her words. But, but, but... Peach stomped her hoof on the ground. Stop playing the innocent foal. You're a monster, like us. Stop pretending. Now! The little filly backpedaled, falling on her haunches and trying to hide her face with her hooves. Please. Please, stop. I'll behave. I don't want you to behave. I want you to wake up! The ghoul mare stomped a hoof on the ground to emphasize her last two words. Soft Air put a hoof on Peach's shoulder. Please calm down. I don't think she's pretending. Don't let your anger drive you. The ghoul mare shoved Air's hoof away. She's two hundred years old. How can she be this naive? Is she a retard? I think she's playing with us. I think that we should... Peach was interrupted by a long, eerie wail. For a moment, her mind rushed back to her foalhood. To that very day, when she closed herself in the cellar, by mistake, and no pony came looking for her until night had fallen. She recalled the fear of being forgotten, the loneliness, every single crack from the barrels. Peach almost lost her voice calling for help, but it was the fair day and no pony had heard her. With the overwhelming sense of guilt, she realized that Puppy wasn't playing with them. All the ghouls turned their attention to the filly in yellow. Her long howl had something supernatural. It was the stuff of nightmares, made audible, and stuck hard on every pony in the camp. Maybe this happened because they were used to seeing a ghoul's rage, but this was the first chance in decades they had to hear a foal's cry. Every sandbox hesitated for a moment before walking over to Puppy and hugging her. What? What the hell is she doing? That sound... Peach staggered, trying to stand on her hooves. I think that you made her cry, Soft Air answered flatly. Well, now I guess that it would be easier to make her accept the fact that we're the bad guys. Right? Mission accomplished. Oh, for Pete's sake, can't you make her stop? Complained a pony with an orange helmet on his head. I can't hear my thoughts! Sandbox continued to hold the foal as their sobs gradually lessened, growing quieter and quieter until they couldn't be heard above a whispering half-spoken apologies. Now, now, you're a good pony. You just missed your mom, and that's okay. The ghoul leader rubbed puppy's shoulders. Every pony has a bad day here and there. Peach Blossom was quite upset, but now you will say that you're sorry, and she will forgive you. Just please, pay attention to her when she's explaining something important, okay? Puppy nodded slowly and tried to establish eye contact with Sandbox, finding some relief in his elderly eyes. The fool turned to the ghoul mare and lowered her head. I... I'm sorry I didn't believe you, Mrs. Peach Blossom. I know that you're a ghoul now. I was wrong. This made Peach feel even more guilty, but she had to play along. At least this way, the conversation was going somewhere. 
Oh, it's all right, little one. Just pay some attention when the older ponies try to teach you something. She paused. What now? Uh, I think I remember something about you wanting us to go away from this place. Why? Did I already say that to Puppy? Was easily distracted. The filly in yellow scratched her helmet, thinking about this brand new question, but she couldn't seem to find a proper answer. I think this is because those pretty ponies promised me a piggy ride on a two-headed cow if I came here. Took a long look around and go back and tell. They were also speaking of how great it would be if the ghouls were totally gone. Puppy smiles, paused for a moment, trying to remember the rest of her story. Oh, right. So I said that I was going to deal with the meanie ghouls, but they told me no. I replied that I was big enough to shoo a ghoul away, whether it was, and they made me promise just to come back here and take a look. But I crossed my hooves, so that promise doesn't count. The filly smiled widely, clearly proud of herself. I was smarter than them. Soft air snickered. Oh, sweet Celestia, this fair filly is hilarious. Can we keep her? Sandbox sighed. This is a strange coincidence. Peach, please go and find Dr. Gitwell. I'll speak to her quite urgently. Soft air, can you keep an eye on this little prodigy for a while? Go to my office and grab that pink toy for our little guest. Day 4. Time, approximately 4 p.m. Location, The Glow, Salt Cube City. Puppy loved her new Pinkie Pie plushie, hugging it tightly when she wasn't showing it to every pony she met. Too bad that it was mostly soft air. See? She's super cool. Way better than that killing pink bot. I bet she's super soft. The filly in yellow poked the plush with a hoof. Ah, uh, stupid spacesuit. I want to kiss her, but I can't. I'm calling her Silky Tail. Soft air knocked on Puppy's helmet. Hey, space pony. Look what I got in here. The ghoul held out a hollow tape for Puppy to see. Guess what it is? Puppy tilted her head. Uh, black thing? I know, I know. It's some stuff that does other stuff. Wow, I couldn't explain it better. Okay, little Miss Scholar, come here and let me connect it to your suit. The ghoul took Puppy's left hoof and opened a small socket on her wrist, then slotted the tape inside. Backup copy initiated. Reading. Warning. System working in emergency mode. Reproduction is impossible. Backup copy finished. The file will be opened as soon as the system will be running on normal mode. Hi, Mr. Voice. Puppy waited for a moment, but she got no answer. See what I mean? He doesn't even know what I did to him, but he's keeping a grudge since we arrived here. Oh, don't worry. It's just the salt cube. It interferes with smaller talismans in their circuitry. Soft Air watched, the smiling fool for a moment. She was totally listening to everything and probably understanding nothing. The ghoul sighed. It makes Mr. Voice sleepy. He'll wake up when you two leave the glow. Puppy nodded. Don't tell this to any pony, but I feel a little lonely sometimes. I don't mean that I have no friends, but in the last few days, I walked a lot. And every pony had something else to do, and no pony really wanted to stay with me, so... Puppy lowered her eyes. Mr. Voice is a bit stupid, and he uses fancy words and he's grumpy, but he never leaves me. I hope he's not angry. Soft Air was going to say something, but he was interrupted by the sound of two ponies arguing with one another. We don't have that much time. The cascade is accelerating. Can't you see it yourself? It's turning cyan already! That was Sandbox's voice. I'm not blind, but I'm beginning to think that you're going crazy. We need at least a couple of days. It's not just open the roof, inflate the balloons, and goodbye, impending doom. We need time to initialize the system, reprogram the autopilot, and lay the course. 
two days, maybe thirty hours, not sleeping at all. This voice came from a mare, seemingly quite old. It will release in seven, eight hours at best as soon as we start moving, if... If we wait, it could be too late to try anything. Now I wonder why this came out all of a sudden. The damned cube was here before even the dome was built, and you give me seven hours warning before apocalypse. Puppy turned her head towards the voices. What's going on? I have no idea, little one. Soft air frowned. This was bad news. There was no point in explaining the situation to Puppy. Bets were that she didn't even understand it, and if she did, it could only make her panic. Hey, do you want to see the gift shop we have in the Northern Hall? Day 4. Time, approximately 4.45 p.m. Location, The Glow, Salt Cube City. And this is how Equestria was made, concluded Puppy. Ah, yeah. That was an amazing story. Uh, but I asked you, who is this questioner you are talking about? Oh, that story. Nay, yeah, it's boring. What about the time I ate a butterfly? Soft air lowered his head, sighing and muttering. I was running down the street when I saw a super duper mighty pretty. At the same time, Puppy started talking while jumping all around. I was running around the street when I saw a super duper mighty pretty. Day 4. Time. Approximately 5.15 p.m. Location. The Glow. Salt Cube City. Sandbox poked his head inside the gift shop, spotted Puppy in soft air and sighed relief. Oh, there you are. You shouldn't wander this far from the Glow. There could be ferals in the area. Soft air chuckled. Oh, don't fret about that. Little Miss Miracle here solved that problem. Sandbox tilted his head. You mean, she was attacked by feral ghouls? Yep, for at once, it seems. I'd say this little filly can fend for herself. I hope so, sighed Sandbox, because I desperately need her help. Hi, Mr. Ugly Pony Boss. Puppy jumped in front of the ghoul leader, sporting a broad smile. I like this place. I had a good idea. I can say to the ponies on the other side of town that all the ghoulies are gone, and they'll never ever bother you. Then we find some nice dress, and you'll disguise as, um, something not ugly, and change your names, like to Madame LaFlower and such. Isn't that a great idea? Oh yeah, and we'll need a trombone. Sandbox cocked his head. And then a sad smile spread across its decomposing face. Oh, I'd love to try that one, really. But I came here to inform you that we're going to be going away. We'll leave the glow. Puppy's ears flattened. You're going away? But, 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 you can't go away. This is your home. You're not meanie. Why are you going away? The filly was already hyperventilating. Wait a moment. I have another idea. We can try to get the other ponies a super nice present and throw them a party so they'll know that you're not evil. It could work. It must work. Sandbox sighed and put a hoof on Puppy's helmet. Don't fret your pretty head, little pony. This is not your fault. It's just something that needs to be done. But I do need your help. Sandbox, could you please explain to me what's going on? I overheard you and get well talking about the FFO. Has this something to do with the cascade you were murmuring about when we arrived? Thumbbox adjusted his glasses. Indeed. We already knew that the cube was not stable. During the years it absorbed and then released the radiation from the mega spell following a cyclic power pattern. <clears throat> As I already explained, during the last months the cycle accelerated. I think the cube reached a point of non-return, and in less than five hours, it's going to release. Softair's expression darkened. Well, that's not leaving a lot of time. So what now? I reckon that the Friendly Force One still needs a little more work. Are you sure about this release thing? What will be released? Any idea? 
Pigul already knew the answer, but he still had the hope of being wrong. I'm not sure about that. Could be the biggest mag pulse ever, or the original balefire that was embedded into the zebra's warhead. When the missile hit the dome, the cube absorbed the matrix of the spell. The problem is that we are speaking of a huge chunk of pure salt that wasn't designed as some anti-megaspell defense. Its behavior is highly unpredictable at best. A death sentence for Salt Cube City at worst. Puppy tried to follow the discussion, but it was far too technical for her. They used all sorts of fancy words mixed up with other terms that she wasn't even sure were real words. Josie decided to go and foresee some other places of the dome by herself. Soft Air put a hoof on Puppy's helmet, pinning her to the place before she got away. Well then, but the FFO navigation system needs calibration, and the autopilot is not working. True. In fact, I won't depend upon those systems. I'll fly the airship myself. Are you kidding me? It's suicide. Moreover, you can't fly a behemoth on your own. It requires at least some pony in the engine section and a lot of work around the hydrogen tanks. Soft Air took a moment to look at Puppy. Then a shade of fear appeared on his face. Ah, are you going to ask her to... No, don't worry. She's just our ticket out of here. The Mark V suit's artificial intelligence talismans were a subproduct of the P7 project. She'll be able to operate the control room just by stepping inside it, and this will buy us time. Sandbox hesitated. Did you really think that I could take her with me? Listen. We could simply evacuate the area and let the cube blow all those bastards in Appleton Tower. We don't owe them anything. They even shoot us on sight if we try and leave the dome. Let's hit the tunnels and let them taste this muffin. Sandbox looks straight into Soft Air's eyes. You can do whatever you want. I'm asking Puppy to open the roof and give me clearance for the takeoff. I don't know how far I'll get. But I refuse to be responsible for the deaths of another single foal. In those towers, there aren't just the ponies you hate, Hare. You're forgetting the falling mares, the young ones. Do they deserve your hate, too? Puppy was still trying to move, pushing her helmeted head stubbornly without an avail against Soft's hoof. Let me go. I want to play outside. Soft Air looked at Puppy, so naive. Shows him to wear the horror she was already living. Even telling her to run as far as possible could have been useless. She was freedom itself. And if a mega spell was really going to detonate. I can work the engines. Just tell me what to do. Sandbox nodded. I knew I could count on you. Peach is coming too. And Dr. Gitwell is already aboard working on the commands. The others are preparing the cube for transportation. Now I need to teach Puppy her part. This may take a while. The ghoul leader looked at the filly in yellow. Hello, little one. Want to explore a new place? Day 4. Time. Approximately 6.30 p.m. Location. The Glow. Salt Cube City. One more time, sunshine. But, Mommy, I repeated it a gazillion times. Just once. This is a super special secret mega spell. You have to say it without mistakes or it won't work. One more time for mommy, please. And then I can have muffins then? It's almost lunchtime. Would you have muffins if you eat all the alfalfa? That's not fair. You always give me too much of it. And you'll get an even super double hug. Ah, okie dokie. When I'm in front of the large round door, I have to put my hoof on the green button. Very well. Then the genie will ask me the identification cow, and I must say, uh, a hint, mommy? Oh, I know you'll remember it. Just wait a moment and think again. Mommy knows you're a smart, pretty pony. Please state your identification code. Uh, F T zero zero one six. Five R D C one G A 
Right. See, it's easy. I knew you could do it. And then what happens? Uh, the genie asks for another word. The passcode. Please state your passcode for this ID. Yes, and you must say. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. ID accepted. First class field technician, rainy days. Access to the control room granted. Warning. There are 3,688 error messages to process. And remember, if you hear the loud honks, you must run to the secret place I told you about and use the magic words. Don't wait for me, understood? Sure, Mom. I love you, puppy. Now come here and get your hug. This wasn't exactly the place where Mommy told puppy to run. But the other day, when there were honks, she didn't want to go underground, when everybody else was playing outside. Oh well. This door asked for the magic words, and they worked. Maybe this was a double super special secret spell. Go figure. Behind the doors, there was a large room with blinking panels. The far wall was actually a sheet of clear glass, covered in a spiderweb of cracks. And the whole room was illuminated by a couple of flickering lights in the ceiling. When Puppy stepped into the control room, the door closed behind her. Warning! Mild radiation detected. Threat level. Negligible. Activating all systems. Mr. Voice, you're back! It's about time. All systems are working properly. Detected in about. Attempt to open a communication bridge. Checking source. Source confirmed. Ministry of Morale, Structure, ID 00210. Salt Cube City Dome, Control Room. Comparing Protocol. Warning. This suit version is outdated. Updating. Please wait. Wow. You sure chat a lot. Did you miss me? I missed you a lot. I found these ghoulie ponies we were looking for. But they're not evil. They say they were really nice. Just a bit ugly. And Peach scolded me. But I was a bit of a meanie with them, so I said I was sorry, and then it was all right. Then Mr. Airsoft gave me a... A sudden ringing noise interrupted Puppy. She derped for a moment before launching herself in search of whatever made the funny noise. After some jumping and skidding, the filly found a red telephone just in front of a dusty can. Puppy picked up the receiver. Hello? Mom's not here, and I'm a little too little, so I can't take a note. Can you call it dinner, pretty please? The universe nod. A familiar voice came over the phone. Uppy, it's me, Sandbox. Good, you're in the control room. I reckon that my hacking tool worked. Here we need still some time to finish replenishing the battery boxes and pumping the hydrogen. It's very important that you stay in that room. Puppy looked a moment at the weird transmitter that Sandbox had given her before they parted. All oh, right, the thingy. I didn't use that. I forgot. But how did you... Doesn't matter. Now please, listen carefully to me. I'm going to hang up the phone, but I'll call you back when we're ready. Wait there and don't touch anything until I call back. Okay? Okie dokie loki. Bye bye. Puppy put down the receiver and started looking around. The whole place was dusty and gray. Quite a sad room that reminded Puppy of that stupid place with the humongous round door. Well, this one was little, and with a lot of desks and screens. Mostly broken. Suddenly, a line of red lights appeared on the big desk in front of the damaged window. Other red lights came up to life on almost every desk and a couple of screens started flickering with green light. Puppy sat on her rump, a bit disoriented. Hey, I didn't touch anything. Cross my heart. Update complete. P7 light client version properly installed. Rebooting system. The whole suit went dark, and Puppy felt a sensation of immobility, just like the day she'd woken up in Canterlot. But this time, it lasted for less than a couple of seconds. Ah. Uh... I feel funny. In front of Puppy's face, the HUD of the helmet flashed with a pink light that occupied her whole vision. In the middle of the pink square, there were seven balloons tied together. Then the logo appeared, 
leaving the usual interface of the compass on top, and the other useless things down left and right. What really surprised Puppy was the voice. It wasn't Mr. Voice, but a different one. A feminine voice that was quite high-pitched and very friendly. Hi there, Miss Days. We've had a bit of a situation here. All the screens are gone for good. And we miss... Uh... 100% of the personnel. They have been working for... Ah, that's a lot of time. The bigwigs should really consider a little turnover here. Oh, but don't worry. I can operate everything just fine from your personal console. Who are you? Where's Mr. Voice? I'm Pinky7, your best friendly pony machine interface. I programmed to try and not take over the world, nor become a judgmental god machine. I'm pretty nice, aren't I? Bobby scratched her helmet for a moment. Do you know Miss Pinkbot? Why, yes. A top-of-the-line entertainment prototype. It's being tested at... No, wait. The test ended quite a couple days ago. Let's see the results. Well, it seems the party was so great that it made you simply die. No, wait. That's intended literally. That doesn't sound good. Well, let's never speak of this pink pot again, shall we? Okie dokie. But it hurt a lot of pretty ponies. Data deleted. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, what was the other thing? Uh... The pink bot? Cried Puppy. Never heard of it. Something else? Uh, yeah. Something about a flying... something? Puppy tapped her helmet, trying to remember. Where's Mr. Voice? I think I like him better. You. You don't like me. You don't want to be my friend. But why? I'm trying so hard. I waited here for, like, 200 years! Please don't send me back to the mainframe. It's dark and lonely. And I can count on my machine cycles down here. Please? Ugh. If you're sure you're not gonna full nap any pony? No way. There must be a rule against that in my program. Don't worry. No full napping. No mass extermination or moral judgment. Just your average little helping pony routine. No worries. And, say, I know this isn't going to help our relationship. The security protocol is annoying me with a little detail. Puppy giggled. <laughs> Miss Voice uses fancy words. Yes, sometimes I do that. Say, are you first class field technician rainy days? Because your counsel here says your name is Puppy Smiles. Silly Voice, I'm Puppy Smiles. Oh, great. Just what I needed. A breach. Two sentries and a dusty talisman, and the first time I have some fun, it's an intruder. The voice paused for a moment. Miss Puppy Smiles, your presence is not authorized. I must ask you to leave, and you have no idea how much this hurts me. But, but, Mr. Sandbox said that I must be here, or the friendship won't fly. Can I wait a little more? Pretty please? Puppy please? If you want to stay, you need an authorization from a chief of staff. Or from a military with at least the grade of colonel. I really, really, really want you to stay, but my hooves are tied. If I only had something to work with. I don't know, a logical paradox or some funny program loop. Oh, wait. What's your reaction with the head technician? Who? Rainy Days. Oh, she's my mom. Do you know where she is? Oh, but that fixes everything. Let's see. Yes, I can move this here and that there and... Voila! Today's the bring your daughter to work day. Are you happy? Uh, I still want my mom. Hey, look at this. It's even in your mission logbook. You are really fond of your mom, aren't you? Well, duh, she's my mom. Puppy smiles deadpanned. Listen here, we can make a... Oh, wait, call incoming on the emergency line. The voice of Sandbox replaced one of the artificial voice. Hey, puppy. We're done here. Are you ready? Hi, Mr. Boss. Sure I am. This Miss Voice chats a lot. Great. Now listen carefully. There are a couple of ponies that I want to say goodbye. Please behave and don't take too much time because we are running a bit late. The voice of Sandbox was replaced by Peach Blossom. Hey, little one. Are you there? 
Hi, Miss Peach. Good. I am so happy to hear you. I wanted to say that I'm sorry. I didn't have to scold you. Peace? Uh, okie dokie? The ghoul mare sighed in relief. Thanks, Celestia. I couldn't do this with that weight on me. Please remember this, puppy. Equestria is an unforgiving place. You have to treasure your friends because they will be few. I... I regret that we didn't have time to get to know each other better. But I know that you're going to be safe. So I have no regrets. Are you going away? I can come and visit you when you arrive, okay? We'll throw a party. Peach took a moment before talking again. Yes. Puppy. Yes. If we meet again one day, we will throw a party. A super party. Sorry. I have to go. The phone went mute for another second, before another voice started talking. Hey, puppy. Soft air here. Please follow San's instructions very well. We're all counting on you there. Hi, Soft. Mr. Voice now is Mrs. Voice. Isn't that funny? What are you talking about? Ah, doesn't matter. I have to tell you something. I know your mother. Now please don't panic. I have little time and you need to listen. You... Why didn't you tell me that earlier? I wanted to. But, with all this mega spell stuff dropped on me before I could. I'm telling you now, so please listen. I was under her command. Third class technician Airsoft, of the Third Armored Company Steel Flanks. Do you remember that tape that I gave you? Uh, the black stuff that does stuff? Puppy tried hard to remember. Yes, that one. It is the location of our field headquarters. It's location south of Salt Cube City, in the marshes. If you can find any clue of the chief, it'll be there. So, when you've finished in the control room, just set the 165th Brigade Field Headquarters as your primary objective, and follow the pink arrow on the compass. Did you understand everything? I... Yeah, sure. Go head quartet... Fine, Mom. Thank you, Mr. Softair. You're the best pony. I think you misspelled Pinkie Pie. P7 chimed in. Oh, one last thing, puppy. In your journey, you're going to learn things that will haunt you. It's unavoidable, but I want you to be a brave pony, so please don't forget these days and the days before the mega spells. Equestria now is a scorched, dying land, but you know that... It it wasn't always like this. Don't let the wasteland scorch your heart, too. Watching you, I still see that the sun can shine in the sky. Ah, uh, why is every pony saying bad things? You're only going for a little fly. It's not like we'll never meet again. Me and Mommy are totally coming to visit you when you find a new home. I... You're incredible, puppy. You make me miss my sister so much. Be safe. And never forget to smile. Soft air closing. Puppy, Sandbox here. Are you listening to me? The elder ghoul's voice interrupted the conversation. Ah, yes, boss. Say, we're gonna meet again, right? There was a long pause when the voice of the ghoul arrived calm and somehow very sad. I'm sure that at the end we'll all meet again. And we'll be together. If you want this to happen... Never lose hope, puppy. There was another pause before the ghoul leader started talking again. We need you to open the roof and give the green for the takeoff. Now repeat what I say. Activate voice council. Authorization code SB1. Chief researcher. Passcode Agatha. Override priority list from 1 to 11. Day 4. Time. Approximately 7.30 p.m. Location, downtown Salt Cube City. Sagebrush was sitting at his window with his sniper rifle ready, guarding both the Big 52 heading south and the dome outskirts. It had been a long shift, but now the daylight was beginning to fade, and within an hour, the Earth Pony was going to put his cutie mark under a table, hopefully with a good bowl of onion soup in front of him. I wonder why they sent that filly into the dome by herself. She's been inside since lunchtime. Poor soul. 
Now we're even sending kids to their deaths. The pony spat down the window and activated the night vision of his rifle sights. In that very moment, what was left of the eastern section of the dome's roof began to collapse with a deafening sound of screeching metal. Luna raped my soul, what's going on there? The guard looked down the scope to try and see what was happening. After several minutes of observation, Sage was sure that the roof was not exactly collapsing. Not completely, at least. There were parts that were simply falling down, and there was a large amount of dust being thrown up. But he could clearly make out the entire section of the east wing was... rotating? The 200 years old cover of the dome was almost fused into a single block of rust. But now, an incredible strength was simply tearing apart every metal plate that didn't want to move. The giant fossil from the bomb days was sliding off completely forgotten. Metal rails with that more often than not couldn't sustain the stress and cracked. Nonetheless, the roof was still moving, slowly, and causing itself an irreparable amount of damage. But it moved. Now that the largest part of the debris was gone, Sage could see that there were two separate sections, similar to the doors of a ceiling. Cellar. The doors were sliding in opposite directions, creating a rectangular opening that was as large as a town square. The noise created quite a commotion in downtown. Every pony ran out of the tents to see what was going on. Some mares simply fainted, screaming things like, The horror! The horror! and such. Sage was made of sterner stuff, and kept his head calm while aiming his rifle towards the hole. Okay, zombies. Let's see what's going on in your rotten heads. A section of the roof stopped moving, with a sudden sound of twisting metal and snapping cables. After less than a minute, the other half of the gigantic hatch finished opening. Then the sky went pink, as a thousand spotlights dotted the clouds. There was an explosion of blue and green smoke, with a shower of confetti all around the dome, and then a high-pitched voice started talking. Phillies and gentle cults! The voice came from the speakers of the dome. It sounded crackly and fuzzy, but where one loudspeaker failed, another fifty kept the pace. Glory to our beloved and majestic Princess Luna and Celestia. It's with immense honor today that I'm here to assist the launch of our newest, most incredible technological jump in the field of mass transportation. Thanks to the Friend Force One and her many sisters that will follow. Equestria will never seem so small to you. The boisterous music played loudly for a couple of seconds. And now, let me introduce to you our guest of honor, the daughter of first class technician Rainy Days, Puppy Smiles. And then I said, Oatmeal, are you crazy? There was a long pause. Uh, was that my voice? La 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 la! <laughs> hey, it's fun! Goodbye, ghoulie ponies! Have a nice trip! Send me a postcard! Sagebrush raised his eyebrows. The hay is going on. First, who is Rainy... Who? Who is Rainy Days, and... What... Is... That thing? From the opening in the dome, an odd shape slowly emerged. It was like a balloon. But it was very elongated, like a giant corn cob, pointy at the ends and larger in the middle. The flying machine had four fins at the back and was completely pink, save for a white oval on each side, which was written, Friendship is Magic. Sage rubbed his eyes and tried to pick his jaw back up off the floor. Now the airship was rising above the dome and slowly rotated itself. Under the humongous pink balloon, there was a small structure similar to an air wagon, but way larger. On what the guard pointer decided was the rear of the cabin, there were a couple of large propellers, and the other two were placed immediately under the uh, two horizontal fins next to the tail of the balloon. The thing that began to begin gain speed had avoided the towers and headed southeast. Sage still looked in disbelief at the balloon flying away when a high-pitched voice from the dome began speaking again. Very well, every pony. I guess that's all. Remember to buy war bonds. This show's been brought to you by the Ministry of Morale. And remember, Pinkie Pie is not happy if you're not happy. So smile, because she's watching you forever. The balloon was already half a kilometer away, when the lights from the dome finally shut down and the music stopped. 
The roof tried uselessly to close again, but this simply led to a new concert of bending metal, snapping cables, and falling debris. Holy mare. She... They... They're gone. The ghouls only jumped on that... thing, and they flew away? The guard scratched his head. Why didn't they do that before? Where did they get that ridiculous air thing? Friendship is magic? This place is going crazy. Almost half an hour later, the ponies had already gone back to bed, and the airship was just a point in the distance. Ten kilometers away. It wasn't moving very fast, if compared with an air wagon, but it was way bigger. The sound of hoof steps from the stairs should have alerted Sagebrush, but he was still looking at the balloon flying away. A mare with a combat saddle knocked on the wall before entering the room where Sage was stationed. Shift time! Hi, mate. Was it exciting? The guard turned to face his comrade. They just flew away. In a gigantic balloon. I... I don't get it. Why did they fly away? The mare tilted her head while looking outside. Hey now. Now the light is gone, don't you feel something's missing? Yeah. The ghoul's another third of the roof of the dome. No. That's not what I mean. Look better. Where's the glowing light? Ah, oh, buck me, you're right. The dome is not glowing. It's dark and ghostly and scary. So, they went away for real. Tomorrow morning with some light, we have to go there and check for radiation. Do you really think that? Suddenly, the world became blindingly white. It was so strong that even with his eyes closed, Sage could see it. He waited for the light to go away, for what seemed like an eternity until... It was the loudest sound ever, something halfway between the sound of thunder and the whistle of a tornado, only louder. Driven by instinct, the guard grabbed his friend and tried to gain shelter behind a wall. Immediately, the sound came a rumble. At first, it was nearly impossible to perceive, but in a matter of seconds, it became an earthquake and with it arrived a solid wall of dust that hit dirt downtown, flattening most of the tents in the market, but barely scratching the sturdier structures. M what was that? Sage rubbed his eyes, trying to open them. I don't know. The ghoul's flying machine exploded? It seemed something like a gigantic spell going... The mayor realized what that implied. Oh, fuck. A mega spell? They had a damn mega spell on that flying thing? Footnote. Level up. 3. New perk added. Intense training. Charisma has changed from 7 to an 8. You are now 14.28% cooler.